Hello there and welcome to the new data analytics case study or the data science mini project you can say where we will going to look at the voting preferences. So these are some of the voting preferences based on the survey that the user has given and this is based on the voting in the US presidential election. So let's look at the data and just understand about this case study about what data it follows. All right, so here I am and uh, what it has is basically column starting from B. This is just a serial number, so no point in discussing that. But uh, vote is something where someone has voted to Bush or Clinton, whom they have voted or Perot. Then uh, whether they have identified themselves as a demographic or a Republican. And then whether a person is uh, female or male and then he, this column basically indicates uh, minus one if the respondent reports that their financial personal financial situation has gotten worse over the 12 months zero for no change and one is better so minus one worse zero no change and one better right and then they have uh, we have another column which is this column G, Nadalcon, and minus one if the respondent reported the national economic. So this was personal and this is national economic condition and this is personal finance. So national economic condition have gotten worse over the last 12 months, zero for no change and one if it is better. And then you have uh, Clinton distance and Bush distance. So what it indicates over here is basically the squared difference between respondent self-placement on a scale measure of political ideology and the respondent's uh, placement of the demographic uh, democratic candidate Bill Clinton. Then you have Bush distance which is nothing but the same squared ideological distance of respondent from the Republican candidate President George W. Bush. And then finally the same column where squared, dis squared ideological distance of the respondent from the reform party candidate which is Ross. So these are the three um, ideological distances based on whom they have voted and uh, basically gives you a lot of information about uh, the different factors which an, an individual is considering when voting. Alright so if you see you have uh, 909 rows right and we will see some of the questions which is related to this case study. So let's go ahead and see the questions. All right. So this file is what92.csv and you can find it in the description of this video from where you can download it. All right. So first question is that you need to read the CSV and drop ignore the first column which is nothing but just a serial number as I explained it in the dataset file. And then you need to check the shape of the dataset. It should have 909 rows and 9 columns. So these rows we also checked it in the front end dataset that was in the spreadsheet. All right. Next question is what is the key objective of this case study? The data collected in the given Excel file is grouped under which data class. So hint which I have given is whether it is cross-sectional data or time series data or longitudinal data. Then the third question is summarize the entire data set with all the variables and its data types. So important point to note here is all the variables not just the numeric variables. Then what variable type is the response variable vote? How many levels does it have? So whether a person has voted Clinton or Bush or Perot, whom, he, whom the person have voted. Then the next question is, give a frequency distribution table on the vote variable to see how many votes each of the candidates like Perot, Bush and Clinton were among the respondents in, the data, in this data set. Then the next question is, create a two-way frequency table for vote and female variable which will help you analyze the data from the perspective of male or female. Then 
plot the above created table in a stack bar chart. So sometimes images represent the you know information in a better way. So whatever you have calculated in question number six, you need to calculate a bar chart on that in question number seven. Then all right, I have shown all the eight, nine, and ten question, but yeah, let's see what they are saying. Fit a logistic model on voters' probability of voting for Ross Perot. And a quick hint over here is create a dummy variable for voting for Perot and run the logistics regression. In R and Py, you can use the GLM method. Py is Python. So the model will be logit of voting, which is nothing but the vote variable for Perot on three variables A, whether the respondent is Republican, REP variable, whether the respondent is female, which is female variable, and the respondent's squared ideological, ideological difference from the Perot, which is Perot this variable. Now the next question is calculated the predicted probabilities for data used to fit the above model. Then what is the main objective in a logit model? And quick hint is what do we maximize here? How do we achieve the objective? So you need to explain it in a few words. Think like uh, you need to explain it to your user where what why you have used this model. What do you try to do it over here with this model? And then quick information about how do we achieve the objective with the help of this model. So this you know writing it in your own words will going to help you understand uh, about uh, the overall purpose of using this model so now let's move on to the next set of questions okay i did not want it to want to uh, bombard it with all the questions with that busy slide so let's go step by step i just corrected that so fit a logistic model on voters probability of voting for Clinton and the hint over here is create a dummy vote variable for voting for Clinton like you did it in the previous case and run logistic regression in both R and Python or the tool of your choice because this is a case study and the open data set which you can apply in any any uh, tool of your choice the model will be a logic of voting which is nothing but vote variable for Clinton on three variables which we have seen earlier as well whether the respondent is Republican whether the respondent is female or the respondent and the respondents squared ideological distance from Clinton. Then you need to do, uh, you need to calculate the predicted probabilities for the data used to fit the above model. After that, fit a logistic model on voters probability of voting for Bush. So similar sort of uh, question, which is, which you have already done in the past two. So this will solidify your uh, knowledge and uh, uh, help you do the practice with these uh, with this question so hint is again creating a dummy variable for voting for push and run logistic regression in r and pi with the glm model and uh, the model will be a logistic logic of vote variable for push on three variables which is the same whether the respondent is republican whether the respondent is female or the respondent square ideological distance from push which is nothing but the bush distance variable all right, the next question is calculate the predicted probabilities for the data used to fit the above model. After that, compare the model fit in question number 8, question number 11, and question number 13. Comment of the observation and the quick hint is you need to compare the AIC score and the residual deviance and see what output you are getting and write an analytical commentary about that. After that, Create a variable say push which has value one if person has uh, chooses or person has chosen to vote for him or value zero if against. Then compute the two sample t tas to operate on two groups created above. Check the hypothesis people with improving personal finances with more likely to vote for push and if it is true. Use data frame uh, for the original data set and create a second data frame that does not include observation of the candidate who received the least support from respondents. So now we will only have two candidates under vote variable. So quick question is you need to look at the question number five. Fit a GLM model binomial logic using response variable vote 
with versus other predictive variables like DEM, demographic republican, female, Clinton distance, Bush distance, personal finance, and the national economy for the data frame created in the question number 18. And finally, the last question is create an alternative model where you can include the gender interaction, which is male versus female, and report ideology and reported ideological distance between the respondent and each of the two candidates for the data frame created in question number 18. So that's the uh, quick case study on an interesting data set. And not only this, you know, once you are done with this, you will start, you may start exploring even the, you know, for your respective country, if you have the data set, you know, if somebody on the internet or a research company is maintaining a data set or a similar sort of data set, then you can create it or, you know, it can open up a lot of uh, opportunities for you. Like you can become like a political analyst and keep on, uh, you know, collecting the data for the politics and, uh, start analyzing that to give your commentary and if you know you know 538 is one of those websites which you know becomes very famous because of uh, these type of uh, general solving the general problem or general analytical problems related to the voting and couple of other social issues so i hope you will enjoy this case study and it will solidify your learning in the area of the data science and i hope you will go beyond this once you have uh, done these questions you know you can build a couple of other models uh, with the help of other um, approaches because this is just a start and then you know figure out the better scores and better output for the prediction of the vote variable so that's about it and i will meet you in the new case study